In this video, I'll share with you how to configure BGP on an iOS XR node. So this will be iBGP and eBGP. In this topology, I have two AS numbers, AS100, where you will find router 11, R11, uh, which is iOS based, and ASR node, which is XR based. And then on AS number 200, I have an iOS based node called R2. The loopbacks are already set. So loopback zero for R11 is 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. And loopback zero for ASR is 1.1.1.1. .1 and for R2, 2.2.2.2. In AS100, when I'm running BGP100, I have already configured OSPF, so I have connectivity between the loopbacks. That will become useful a little bit later. So let's start just by looking a little bit at the configuration and getting our baseline ready. It is assumed that you already know how to configure BGP on iOS nodes, but let's just take a look at how it is configured at this point. So as you can see, I have this is for root um, router 11, R11. I have router BGP, I have router BGP 100. I'm redistributing connected network. And the neighbor is the loopback address of the ASR node. And I have also configured the update source loopback zero. So for AS100, the RBGP session between R11 and the ASR is between loopbacks, which is a common design and configuration method. And I'll just hop to router 2 and I'll just check the configuration or share with you the configuration for BGP. So remember, this will be eBGP. So that session will be going between AS100, between the ASR and the iOS node R2. Configuration is different because it's not sourced from the loopback addresses, but it's on source from the point-to-point -point link. So it's pretty much the same, router BGP 200 for R2, I'm redistributing connected subnets, and the neighbor is 172.16.1.1, which is the RP address on the link between the ASR node and R2. So, on R11, let's ping the loopback zero on the ASR node and source it from the loopback zero or off router 11. So I have connectivity. Now let's start configuring BGP on the XR node. So router BGP 100. And then I'll put my neighbor, which is not my neighbor address or remote address is the loopback zero of router 11. Set the remote AS as 100. So this is one way to configure it. I will just exit and not commit this configuration and show you a slightly different way to configure it. It's pretty much the same, but just very little differences. So set my remote neighbor. And here, instead of just continuing as we did here with remote AS and so forth, we just hit return. And then we set the remote AS separately. And then we set the update source loopback address zero separately. Okay. There are a few additional configuration that are needed, but I want to show you first how to spot them from the log. So here you have essentially deploy the configuration that is similar to iOS-based nodes. Then I commit. 
for the show BGP summary in iOS show IP BGP summary this is the way it's actually done but for XR you have to specify the address family so show BGP RPV for unicast summary and then here you can see this is now now we're trying to validate if our session is established is established and here you get this message here that none of the requested address families are configured for this instance so what it means if I show you if we go back to the configuration here we have configured BGP but we actually have not configured the address family that we want this session to be established for let's go back in root to BGP 100 and I go under the neighbor and here I'm going to introduce another another error just to make a point and let's set the address family for the neighbor and I commit and here you can see I get an error so what is this error show configuration failed this command is actually quite useful because it, it it dives in into the details of why there's an error and you can't commit so here you can see BGP detected the warning condition the address family has not been initialized what this means is that before you configure an address family for a neighbor session you actually have to configure it in the BGP or under the BGP process so I will exit to go a few level up and now I configure my address family and this is under the BGP process so it's not under the actual session So let's see what is it that we're pushing in terms of configuration. So under root to BGP, we have just added the address family, RPV4 Unicast, and under the neighbor, you also have to have the address family, RPV4 Unicast. So if you're configuring RPV6 session, the same method applies. So you will have to configure address family, RPV6 Unicast under the root to BGP process and also under the neighbor. So here I'll just commit. Show BGP RPV4 unicast summary. And now we have a session established and we are receiving prefixes. Let's just check that. So we got the prefixes that are coming in from router 11. So just one note on iOS you can also start or getting yourself used to use the show BGP RPV4 unicast summary. So this is as far as iBGP is concerned. Now, the same principle will apply for eBGP. So remember, I have already configured R2. So what I have in R2 is AS200 and I'm using the link addresses for my session so neighbor 172.16.1.2 remote AS is 200 and remember to add the address family after the neighbor and you don't have to add it under the the, the root of BGB process because it's already there from the previous session so so this is my configuration 
for IBGP and this is my new configuration for my eBGP. Let's also add a redistribution. So when you are redistributing here, your statement should come after the address family. So you can have, if you have an IPv6 address family, you can have different policies. Maybe you're not redistributing, redistributing connected, but you're redistributing static. And same for VPN v4 address family, for example. So here, I'll redistribute connected and I commit. Go back to the config once more. So this is the setup. You set your redistribution under the address family that is sitting in the BGP process itself. And then you have your eBGP neighbor here with the address family RPV4 set. So everything should be okay in principle, but as we're gonna see, it is not. Because eBGP is slightly different in iOS XR. So in here, you can see that there's a session that is established, but we have an issue with it. We're not receiving prefixes. So the session is up. If I hop into router R2 on AS200, I can see that there's in the log, I can see that the session is up. So BGP RPV4 unicast summary. I can see the session is established and I know I'm redistributing connected on both R2 and the ASR node, but there are zero prefixes received. So an important thing with ASR is when you configure a BGP session, you also need to add root policies, inbound and outbound. So the root policies are equivalent to root maps in iOS. So let's just show how this is done. Normally, root policies you have to you have to be very specific in BGP, especially if you're working for an ISP and you you are dealing with transit peering and so forth. You have to be very specific on what you are allowing and what you're permitting and so forth. But here we will just make a very loose root policy that will allow everything. So root policy, I will call it pass. And you have a lot of options here. So I will just pass and policy and commit. So I've created a single root policy. Which essentially permits everything. So I'm not matching on a prefix, I'm not matching on an AS path or anything of the sort. Now, if I go back to my configuration for BGP, the root policy, also called RPL, should go under the neighbor because this is where we want to set the rules. And in this case, it's needed for the eBGP session. So remember, when you're configuring eBGP on iOS XR, you always need to use an RPL or root policy. So let's go and configure this. And then I go on the neighbor, the full neighbor, remote AS, address family, and here, root policy and I call that policy inbound and I'll also call it outbound and then I commit this is how my config looks now under the eBGP neighbor so under the address family I have my root policies inbound and outbound so let's go back and check if this has the desired effect And here we have we are receiving four prefixes. 
and then I'll go to R2. Earlier we had zero prefixes received, and now we also have four prefixes. So two things or a few things to remember about configuring BGP on an iOS XR. You have to initialize the address family. So this is the address family type that you will be using for your neighbors. It could be RPv6, it could be VPN v4, and you can have whatever you want under root to BGP. Uh, they won't take any effect unless you set the address family. So uh, unless you set the session per neighbor. So for example, I can set my VPN v4 unicast. I can also add a VPN v6. RPv6 unicast and I commit. So for as long as I have not use this address families under a neighbor session, they're not taking effect. So here they are, all listed here, but none of them are actually called under a neighbor session. So if, if I was enabling or configuring RPV, an RPv6 session for um, this neighbor or the IBGP neighbor 11.11.11, uh, .11 .11, I would add the address family underneath and have my configuration also. So this is the end of this short session. I hope you have found it enjoyable and educational. Any comments or questions, please drop them in the comments below. And thank you for watching.